I have good news. I just got my PMP certification. <laughs> This blog provides general information on lifestyle. The content shared herein is based on the blogger's personal study journey and should not be taken to be in partnership with any company paid advertisement or affiliation. In addition, the blogger is not a PMP or PMI facilitator nor contracted by the companies or instructors mentioned herein but only shares general information or knowledge as it pertains to her own study as it may benefit the general public. Hi there, <laughs> you caught me rehearsing my notes. <laughs> okay hello everyone thank you so much for joining me today on my vlog bold petals vlog if you're a new visitor thank you so much do click the subscribe button and if you're a returning visitor i do appreciate you so happy holiday we just celebrated easter and i have good news for you i just obtained my pmp certification and i'm so happy about that but i want to share this knowledge just in case you're thinking of obtaining one for yourself or you're already preparing i believe this would be of great use to you yes i know it's actually different from what i usually share but it's been burning in my heart to share it with some of my uh friends who may be looking at getting the certification so um it's going to be a long one so but very very important for you so i do uh, appreciate if you'd grab a popcorn or something and then stick around while we go through this thank you so much so a little bit of background about me i have uh, experience as a customer care representative administration also um junior scrum master junior project uh, manager and also a scrum master too afterwards uh yeah so i transitioned from one career path to the other before i got here so now um the the fact still remains that at a point in time you would want to branch out you would want to gain more knowledge broaden your horizon and I think that is actually what happened to me in this case because obtaining my professional scrum master one certification and also save at a point I wanted to learn more I wanted to you know you can never stop learning so I, I, I noticed that I was struggling with some some things and the only way for me to gain that knowledge was to take the extra step or take the bold step to take my uh, pmp certification exam then another area was the fact that i wanted to elevate elevate in the sense of career path i wanted more for myself i wanted more when it comes to my career so i was like okay i think at this point the best thing for me is to take a step further away from here so that's uh, the case and yes i wanted to <laughs> i wanted to have more when it uh, comes to salary of scale so i think uh, those we are the the facts or the different reasons that made me say okay i think uh, the best bet for me is now to take this exam and before i even went ahead to do that i had to go into meditation i had to pray about it and also i had to meet professionals in, on the field like those uh who are already practicing or who already certified like my boss back then i had to uh, i had long conversations with him and also my mentors back then at work to know if this is actually the best step for me to take at that particular moment and uh, also i know one thing i did was i took up courses uh on youtube or udemy coursera to know more about these um, projects management uh, professional parts uh, that i wanted to take proper or uh, the exam itself to know if this is actually what i wanted to do although i had um uh, like uh, growing up i noticed the fact that oh i love organization i love bringing people together to do stores um outgoing i love the fact that oh we have this idea that we can create into or, or build up on so these are the things that actually made me make up my mind that okay this is actually uh, this is the right time for you to move so i hope i'm able to <laughs> um, build on uh, those reasons 
this brings me to the what and why for anyone out there who wants to take any certification even it might not even be projects management professional certification or uh, scrum it can be any order in any field medical education and all that now the what there are things you need to consider before you you think about going for any certification exam one is interest is it something you are interested in because it is that interest that will propel you or push you to work hard or to create our time and all that so the second is just like myself i know you would like to have a career elevation um, a promotion at your workplace then another thing you need to also what you need to consider before you go for this is the fact that there is a competition or demand for this uh, certification or some certifications actually whenever you are um, applying for a job opening so you may need to have this at the back of your mind whenever you want to take such steps then the why why you should go for this it's i believe that um whenever you you take an exam let's take uh for instance it boosts your morale um, even let's even go back to our school exams back then in high school or university and you take an exam you you pass it boosts your morale right so take for instance that you go for your pmp or any other certification and uh, you come out successful it would definitely boost your morale it would also give you gaining ground like you gain more ground even as you're gaining more knowledge about it and uh, then another important thing is that um, you have to or what you need to consider is the resources um, in this case resources i mean your time you have to know that uh, for this you need to create out time for it and the resources in this case also is the financial aspect so you have to start as early as possible to plan towards it in terms of savings you, you don't want to at a point oh you have this to do and you have this to do and uh, maybe you're unable to continue with it at some point so you need to have the what what you have to consider or what happens at each point and the why why am i actually um working so hard for this or why am i actually killing myself to get the certification and all that is it worth it so the interest the fact that it would boost your morale the fact that it would take you higher up there in terms of career would um would push you and also the why the why that oh i'm gaining so much knowledge from this i'm going i'm gaining so much confidence um, even you you would even notice it as you are preparing for the exam you are gaining knowledge even like you are able to apply it whenever you go about your daily activities or whenever you see yourself at work no matter what you do it doesn't matter but the fact that you are applying what you learn each day to something then imagine you practicing that with you being certified i think it's something everyone should consider yeah so um so far i hope we are gaining uh, more knowledge or insights even as we go on <laughs> with this discussion so um do um like um subscribe do drop me a message or a question just in case okay so now you have some things that you may need to consider before you start proper so you know before i mentioned that i had to have discussions long productive discussions with um, some of my colleagues uh, up there those are already practicing my mentors i had to meditate think have long thoughts about it because i am going to invest so much and i need results so i am someone that works uh, i work a lot with resources when when it comes to like how how much do you know about this so i don't want to work blindly so i believe that's the case for every other person out there 
So things that you may need to have in mind is one, is the time factor. This preparation would demand a lot of time from you. Time you need to plan, you need to create out a schedule because I know that some of us may be working, some of us may not, um, may be self-employed. Uh, we have so many things. Uh, so you need to map out sufficient time for this preparation. And you are about to make an investment, so you don't want to um, fail at it. So, and then the second part of it is that you may have to consider some things like family. Uh, um, you, some of us would may have families like and kids, um, husbands or wives, and uh, yes, at this point, you may need to educate them or about that the fact that you are about to take an exam and uh, everyone would need to support you. You know that uh, stuff. You need to move things around. Even your work may come in here. Because uh, at the end of the day, you go to work in the morning and in the evening, you're already tired or spent. So you may need to move your work around like maybe you have some leave. Uh, you may need to consider taking that when you are preparing. But I would say make it strategic because of some uh, things. Then resources. Yes, resources in the sense that you would need to invest in the, the study schedules or study manuals or uh, like uh, maybe your simulators and also you need to also invest in paying for the exam. So that is actually a huge one. Then if you decide to take up trainings, uh, that is also one of the things you would need to consider. Try to see if that can fit into your day-to-day -day activities or your weekend. So you have self-paced trainings and also the ones that um, you have over Zoom with um, trainers. Uh, so you can take up a course on Udemy or you can choose to go with um, one a facilitator or a training school. So I, I believe those are the things you would need to have in mind at, at the back of your mind that for me to start off this journey, because it's like a journey. So for you to start off this journey, you would need to put some things into consideration. Moving on from uh, what we've been discussing so far, uh, I would like to call our attention to something very, very important here. Yes, you need to have some things at the back of your mind, but don't forget that you should build up on a mindset. A mindset like your mind would have to set, <laughs> be on at a lot that I am preparing for an exam. So, uh, you have to start asking yourself um, what we call discovery questions. <laughs> yes, what can actually go wrong? What could go wrong at is because I'm not trying to be pessimistic, but you know that uh, being practical or in the field of project management, you'd always like to look at, um, uh, you'd always like to fish out impediments or you even look at risk before they even occur, right? So in terms of uh, planning, you have to plan your time, you have to plan your schedule, plan your resources, uh, plan w when you know, like the l least important things you need to look at them because they can even be in your way at any point in time you need to start asking yourself okay i'm preparing for this exam would my work schedule be in the way or what if i have a headache one day what if i'm unable to meet up with my study plan and all that so you have to start making up your mind and like if you have all those negative risk, what we call like things that would be in your way, you should also plan on how to mitigate them or how to 
um, remove them on entirely from your way for example uh, take for instance that okay you have a holiday coming up and uh, you need to study or you need to be in uh, a training section uh, you should know if you should be able to guess if anything can go wrong on that day so that you either move it or see how you can remove the impediments out of the way entirely so it's important that you build a concrete mindset and at the same time build a concrete plan fish out your possible risks things that can go wrong for good or things that can go wrong for bad and see how you can also plan around them at the end you should be able to have a successful exam although we on the internet uh, we have sufficient information you just need to, to click and all what you need will pop up but you know that um, not all information you at a point you can get too much of information that you get confused about it so I have um, three things I would like to I call three important factors to uh, studying for your PMP you need to have them uh, handy first of all is your source of information you have to be sure that uh, this source of information is the correct source or is the right source and uh, also make sure you have up-to-date data or up-to-date um, it, it could be up-to-date uh, material for your examination up-to-date simulator because you know the PM uh, book it has gone through different phases and all that and you would want to get hold of the most recent one okay then another thing is you have to stay focused focused in the sense that i know when i was for instance when i was uh, preparing i had to uh i had to pause at a point because i had so much information being thrown at me i sourced for so much information and, and at the point i got overwhelmed i didn't even know which one to read or which one not to read because you know pmp itself is wide so you can imagine trying to read for that or study for that with so much at your hands and i at a point i just took a break and then I had to streamline what I had or the information made available to me to know where to hit uh, whatever I need to hit from. Moving on, uh, I would like to have a short recap of what we've been discussing since uh, we started with the a brief introduction about me and why I decided to go for my PMP exam after um, having some experience or background in IT and also the what and why you also need to consider before you consider taking up uh, this certification that is interest resources involved and what you need to have at the back of your mind having that mindset looking at the risk factors and how you can mitigate those risks ahead of your exam so i would like to talk about the fact that at the point i was sure after my research discussion long discussion with my bosses when i got myself um when i know i boosted my morale up to the point of um, investing such um huge amount of resources to take up the pmp exam so i when i knew that okay i'm ready for this what i did uh, after i have um planned and all that and um, carried out my investigations and so i planned myself in terms of time just like I've, i mentioned earlier i had long meditations prayed about it then i went to the pmi website to register register as a user not the exam yet so i just registered myself as a, a user on the on the platform not the exam now i would like to talk about the materials i used or i utilized for this exam the first was rita um the, that was the, the last edition 
then i also got andrew dial's uh, simulator and 30 uh, 39 as pdu yes i went through that then i also uh utilize youtube you know we have a lot of resources on youtube but it depends on you but i use alvin and uh, also david uh, uh question and answers on youtube then also i took up a class or rather i registered with certificate certificate edge uh class where i we had the class i think that was also for 35 hours or so then uh what else did i do so for you you can also cons if you want you can register for the exam get the pm recent pm book and or even if you have access to the pm boxes you can as well utilize that but it all depends on you i am just uh, relating on some of the materials i use for the exam which were useful then on uh, youtube i remember that i went through andrew's live classes and also i had to watch um, his preparatory classes like a day before the exam or tips on how to write the exam tips on how to prepare yourself or how to manage time for the exam so i hope you are taking notes though <laughs> but surely those came in handy then the last part that you shouldn't miss network you know they say your network is your net worth what i did was I branched out to meet people that are already certified on LinkedIn, on my PMP, because after the class with certification age or certificate age, uh, they formed a WhatsApp group. So I interacted with my my colleagues there and uh, to ask them like, okay, this what uh, relevant materials did you study for the exam? And also we, we at a point we formed a study group that bb um janet and myself also so the best part of everything was uh, the fact that you have a network you have a network in terms of people you connect with on linkedin on whatsapp group and all that so i utilized that i remember that uh, i was able to reach out to um uh people practicing or people already taking their exam to inquire on the materials they use to study for the exam and also we brainstormed together and uh, i was able to get substantial information on uh, where to study um like where to source for uh, uh, materials for the exam and also the best part also was the whatsapp group uh study group we, we formed as uh, bb um amar and i and also we had the general whatsapp group where we also um uh, brought our questions forward and we were supported by um some of the admins so i these were some of the materials i used or the study guides rather i would say that we are so helpful that at the end i never had any regrets yeah. I have some tips for you ahead of the exam or for your preparation. One, you have to be strategic in your study. Uh, so you know that you don't have time. It's quite a, a bulky one or a voluminous one. So be strategic in what you read and how you read and what you consume. Uh, plan your time as much as possible um read what is uh, necessary read what is necessary and uh, as you are studying please use your five senses sense of smell hearing and all that because you are going to use audiovisual you are going to read from paper and all that so when i say use your five senses as you're reading try to imagine what you read if they say a, uh, a project uh, maybe what you read about um, the knowledge areas about initi initiating a project planning try to imagine what you read even as you are solving the questions please look out for your weak point now um, 
if you are using any simulator or you are doing it over YouTube, it depends on you, but look out for your weak point. One, when you've done the simulator and you see the result, check out what you failed. Try as much as possible to know why you failed those and go back to study in depth. Like have it in such a way that it becomes a normal thing. Okay, you 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 see this question in the on, in the simulator. You know the answer and you know why that is the answer. It's not a guesswork. You know why you as a scrum master you have to um, help your team remove impediments. You as a project manager why you should um, you have to put a change through a change process. Why you have to follow an organizational process asset. Why some things are important. Why you shouldn't even do some things. So that's why um, in the question you see you should do this, you should do that. You should know at first instance what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Because in the exam you may meet um, uh, questions that are tricky and you know to make you fall off, um, go up balance and all that. So then and also always have the mindset of a project manager in the simulator when the question is all about waterfall have the mindset of a project manager um, trying to work through a project using the waterfall methodology then if the question is about agile have the mindset of a servant leader that would help you go about the questions then um Okay, uh, well, just to go through what we have said, one is you have to be strategic with your studies, your time factor. You mustn't read everything, like know what is important for you to consume. Just like I said, you have so many information on the internet, on YouTube being thrown at you. Know how to streamline, know how to see those. Then you have to have the mindset of uh, a, a traditional project manager and the mindset of a servant leader. Then while you are reading, please look out for your weak areas and even your strong areas. Build upon your strong areas and try as much as possible to see how you can work on your weak areas. Then also don't forget to research, research, research. That would help you build upon your strengths and also even work on your weaknesses. Um, I think <laughs> that should be it. Then I forgot the last part. Using your five senses, always imagine what you read. Even imagine the questions you answer on the simulator. When they say, oh, you as a project manager uh, and a stakeholder comes to you to complain that um, the deliverable wasn't done according to his requirement, try to imagine you as that project manager at that point or that servant leader. Hello. So, um, when it comes to a day before the exam, I completely understand how one can feel um, the anxiety, the unsureness of so many things, uncertainties, unforeseen circumstances, you asking yourself, questions about this exam if you are ready or not about it i would really like to assure you that you don't have anything to worry about and also i'm going to um, give you some tips on how to prepare yourself a day before the exam now a day before the exam i would advise you do few things and these i've learned from my research and uh, some of the researches i carried out and also that's on youtube and some of the um, courses i took up while trying to prepare for this exam one is for you to calm down calm down <laughs> in the sense that you need to be saying as much as possible you need to have a clear mind and also you know you are trying to go into something very important to you yes uh, there are so many bordering questions going on around your mind at that point but it is very important you have a clear head
and a clear path to whatever you want to do so try as much as possible to calm your nerves um, take as much rest as you can it is very very important take eat well take enough fluid before the exam day then also i would suggest that if you have um, friends who must have taken the exam before or people practicing you can call them for a revision that will help you and it will go a long way also i would encourage you to try to talk yourself out of that anxiety boost your morale encourage yourself tell yourself that you can do this but in a case that you're unable to do that for yourself if you know someone who can do it for you do call them and and confide in them and they will talk you out of that mood or out of that state of unsureness okay then another thing i would suggest you do is this try as much as possible to um, listen to or view um, Andrew, Andrew's uh, mindset uh, video, it would really, really go a long way because what you really need is to have that agile mind, mindset or waterfall traditional um, mindset because that is, uh, if even when you are going through the PDUs or when you are going through the simulators do that is what you really need to have handy to answer your question so imagine uh, you being asked in the simulator uh, if when a, a stakeholder brings up a change um, what do you do next or what are you supposed to do certainly you have to take that change through the change process set up by the company right you don't just go into um, implementing uh, a change without following due process so these are the the tips i have for you a day before the exam try as much as possible to calm yourself down your nerves down encourage yourself do you can do a revision with friends try to take in some rest because you need that you don't want to have um black out during the exam or as a result of fatigue you feel too tired to read the questions then also try as much as possible to go through andrew's mindset video i hope this helps you wow what a long one i know <laughs> so we've talked about writing this pmp certification what we need to have in mind and how we can go about preparation now let's talk about the d-day of the exam yes <laughs> Wow, at times you ask yourself, how did I get here when you get to the exam hall? <laughs> yes, you got there by hard work, I would assure you. Now, I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks about uh, writing the exam. And I got this from my research, watching uh, videos on YouTube and also uh, trainings. And you know, what I understand is that after writing some exams, it resonates almost the same method when it comes to answering questions and all that. And how do you go about writing your exam, be it PMP, be it any other exam? The first thing you have to do is this. Have the mindset you need for that exam. They should be like you are about to travel you know your way through the, the 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 corners you know that there's a pothole ahead you know that there's a gas station you know that you need to do this on your way on that is exactly how it works in this sense all exams come you go into each exam with a mindset of expectation and how do you do that by um, going through your pdus going through the pm book um, going through materials on youtube and online now secondly please read through the questions carefully you already know that there is a time factor today so read through the questions carefully read in between lines and timely so as you're reading you have to be careful and also you have to be time conscious please have that at the back of your mind then as you are reading through these questions you have to put your five senses into good use sense of smell sight 
hearing, tests and all that. You have to feel the questions. You have to imagine yourself as that agile um, servant leader. You have to imagine yourself as that traditional project manager doing this work, trying to remove impediments, trying to bring the team together, trying to put uh, a request through a change. Do you understand? So you have to be at alert. Your senses there will have to be alert. Then for our exams, we all use elim elimination method, right? Good. You, are, you should be able to strike out um, options that you feel that these don't really look like or these or these don't really look like what should be the answer. And please don't spend too long on a particular question. When you feel that, oh, this, 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 this you read the question again and, and you feel that I'm taking too long, please pick your best bet and flag it. You can always come back to review it before you submit so that you don't get caught up with time. Hmm? Then another thing is this. Please take your breaks. They are important. Stretch, take a little bit of fluid when you're on break, taking oxygen to your lungs and into your, because you need it to go on. You are going to sit for how many hours for an exam? So you need those, uh, those activities to keep you going. It's very important to know that you'll be able to review your um, the questions you've answered at the end. Try as much as possible to do that if you can because um, you are trying to go back to those questions you guessed or you picked an option in a hurry. You can never tell. But please, if you're not sure, you can as well leave them as the way they are. Always have this at the back of your mind. Whenever you submit, you won't be able to go back again. Even Andrew say, said that during his um, on his PG, and also you also see that on uh, on the internet when you research about uh, PMP exams, and be strategic. Be strategic in answering all your questions. Remember, have all your sense organs uh, in place. Five sense organs in place. Answer the questions timely as timely as as you can. You can always flag the question and make sure you take up an answer before you move to the next answer and remember to take your breaks i hope i'm able to um, provide you sufficient uh, tips or and tricks on how to go about any of your exams or even the pmp exam on that day thank you so we are leaving the best for last some would ask when should i write this exam when do I know that I'm ready for my PMP certification exam? Um, it's quite a difficult one to answer because it's on uh, the personal basis. It depends on one. But um, from what I've learned, some would say, some trainers would tell you um, when you must have gone through the PDUs, when you must have gone through your PM book and you're already on the simulators and you are scoring a particular figure or you are at a particular point and you weighed your options and also internally uh, you you are confident enough that it is time you write the exam then you can go forward to do this so uh, it depends it all depends on you but for me I went through the PDUs, I went through the materials that were made available to me and uh, also I went through the simulator and uh, at a particular point when I felt confident and also when I was scoring, getting a particular score uh, on the simulators, I registered for the exam, then went ahead to write it after um, PMI approved my application so um, also where to write this exam this can be written in the comfort of your house or your home or at the center but mind be mindful that if you need to write this at home you need to have um meet to you need to meet some requirements or your system your, your internet speed will need to meet some requirements and my in my own case when i was practicing with the simulator i noticed that at a point i would be able to connect to the internet anymore so i had to at that point um, be strategic made up my mind that oh i may need to go to the center you remember what i talked when, when i said uh something about risk so i asked myself what 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 could go wrong 
So what if my internet uh, uh, um, at a point shuts down? What do I do about it? So I had to transfer the <laughs> I had to transfer the the the, the risk. Or will I put it that way? Or the the responsibility? So I had to go to to the center to write the exam. So it all depends on you and. Uh, also, for you to register the, for the exam, um, when you uh, apply, you have to do your application or put in your application, uh, PMI would uh, approve it, then you choose a location and a date. Um, I hope I'm able to share substantial information on how you can prepare yourself for your PMP certification or steps towards uh, your PMP certification. I wish you all the best and please if you find this um, video or this particular segment useful kindly um, like share subscribe leave a, a comment I'll be glad to read your comments and all that do take care and I wish you all the best in your exam and also your career endeavors bye Um, I understand that taking an exam is a huge step and the day before the exam is usually one of the difficult days of uh, someone's life. You know that you're in a state of anxiety, you are in a state of um, uh, what if this happens or what if that happens you ask yourself so many questions you are mindful of so many things and uh, a little thing you are almost up the hook for me mine was after i registered for the pmp exam i couldn't sleep i couldn't sleep even to to study was almost a problem because I had so many things going through my mind but I'm here to share some of the ways I overcame those or uh, and also and I would also like to share some of the tips you can as well uh, use to see how you can also overcome yours just in case you are preparing for yours or looking forward to do that very soon now one thing you have to do is this you need to calm your nerves you need to calm down you need to do um try as much as possible to get rid of those anxiety it is easier said than done but it will help you in the long run so tell yourself that you can do this you fought so much to get here so um this is the last lab and you would definitely get through i assure you then secondly try as much as possible to encourage yourself if this is difficult for you to do or to boost your morale if you have a friend or a boss someone you can confide in call them up and um, have them listen to you and you see that when you talk through those uh, moments with them or even when they start speaking to you to tell you how much uh, hurdle you have passed or you have jumped to get here you will see that you will be a little bit relieved another important thing you need to do is try as much as possible to rest you don't want to have blackout or um, you don't want to forget stores and all that rest rest you can't overemphasize the importance of resting a day before the exam even when you go on youtube um, even on on the internet it would always be there that you need sufficient rest to be able to write the exam the following day eat well taking enough fluid not too much that uh, it would disturb you <laughs> you know what i'm trying to say but try as much as possible to feed well then another important thing you can do is you can revise you don't really need to do intense studying before the day even uh, when i talked to bb before the exam day she emphasized that that i just need to rest that because there's no amount of study you do now that some things you don't know you know them all of a sudden so it's better you maintain or retain the ones you've gathered do you understand so you can call up a friend you can brainstorm with a friend or read through some stuffs that they're not intense 
so that those revisions will just try to like pinpoint your mind to some uh, facts then lastly you can go through the mindset because what you actually need to go into that exam hall is the mindset mindset to shift your mind towards being a traditional uh, um, project manager or shift your mind towards being an agile servant leader when the questions are thrown at you during the exam you need to answer those questions with your five senses so you need to move around uh, answering the questions then please try as much as possible to get familiar with information surrounding the exam that is on it's on PMI. PMI will provide you sufficient information about what you need, how to register or what you need when you come to the exam hall or what, or what and what not is not needed. Then also you can also watch videos on YouTube that would educate you on the time you need to spend on the exam the 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 um the, the what you need to, how you need to make up your mind about the exam how you need to manage your time and all that those would surely come in handy so at this point i hope i'm able to share sufficient um information on what you need to do a day before the exam and i wish you all the best mm -hmm.